The Small Business Show, episode 176 for Wednesday, June 20th, 2018. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is BFA by for and about small business here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm Shannon Jean. Very excited to be here today. How are you doing, Dave? I am good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to awesome. be here, too. I always like doing this show. That's good. Yeah, yeah, I do, too. I, I, always, always, get, I yeah. always get stressed <laughs> leading up to it, but then I love it uh, right. during and after. It's great. Right. That's very good. And hey, so today, you know, we're going to talk about a little different topic. You know, we always... Well, we frequently focus on startups, new business, and that can, you know, folks can kind of think maybe younger crowd or somebody getting going. But, you know, what about the, the second career uh, folks that are transitioning maybe from, you know, one, yeah, one career and want to start something else up? And so I'm really happy today that uh, we have a guest, uh, Bjorn Burnett. And uh, Bjorn, thanks for being with us here today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having us, you guys. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let, let's let's start with just talk about the background a little bit. I know you know, you mentioned that you transitioned from you know being a firefighter and an EMT to opening your own small business focused on you know finance and and uh, wealth advising that kind of thing. How did you how did you get to that spot? You know, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to you know work in a capacity where I'm you know, serving the community, you know, making the world a better place. So I went to school to become a firefighter. So I got a degree with uh, you know related to fire science, and had a seven year career uh, where I worked for you know the Forest Service, uh, various ambulance services, and um, some different small uh, rural fire departments. Wow. Wow. That's yeah, crazy. It, uh, so you, you've been in, you've been in fires. I mean, that's, like, it, it, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I didn't go into too many burning buildings. Most of my fire was, you know, uh, you know, extremely larger than that. There, uh, you know, these forest fires that I was on would be, uh, you know, you know, when you're standing near the ocean and you like feel that like power from the earth, yeah. you know, when you're standing, when you're standing, you know, you know, a few hundred yards or 50 yards from, a whole forest on fire you just feel this massive energy that uh you know not too many people really get to get to see that stuff and experience it so yeah it was a really uh it was a great career i absolutely loved uh you know every minute of it wow. that's great man. yeah we I talk about imagine. putting out fires in our businesses but man uh -huh. that, this takes it to a whole different <laughs> level yep it, it does it does <laughs> so how uh, let's talk about that transition of you know, you have a few choices to make, right? You can go to work for someone else doing something different uh, and, or you can start your own business. And so wh how did you make that, you know, that choice? What was it compelled you to go out on your own? A few different ways. So, you know, for to be like in this career where you know people who get hurt and you know people who like pass away. But when you start a career in a field like that, um, it kind of starts off normal and then you kind of, uh, you know, you, you grow up, you know, I'm 34 now, uh, you know, you get a little bit older, you know, you meet a, meet a pretty girl and decide you want to get married. Uh, you start to think about those things. Um, so that's what started to, you know, drive my decision-making on, you know, what else can I be doing with my life where I can, you know, not be worried about a tree falling on me and not come to home to my wife. Um, one day, yeah. uh, because that's, that's, that's the reality that, uh, that I worked in. And, um, you know, when that, when that tragedy happened in, uh, 2013, when we lost those 19 firefighters, that was definitely, you know, that, that, that community is really tight and, you know, you work with guys, you know, every year. Um, so, you know, I've been on those same fires as those guys. I do those same exact job as those guys. And that was when I, started, you know, really thinking, okay, I have to, I have to make a change. Still want to be doing something where, you know, I'm able to kind of teach, uh, cause I liked being a, being a leader, being an instructor, especially on the EMS side of things. Um, and where's there, what kind of career can I have where I can make a business own and do things my own way and still have like this layer of support and where's there, you know, a massive need uh, in our society. And so when I was approaching it that way, you know, the, where, you know, you know, I, 
like every kid after college, uh, well, maybe not every kid for my, my speaking for myself, I made some terrible financial decisions regarding student loans, you know, credit cards, oh, just sure. stupid, stupid things you're that people not alone. do. Yeah, you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. For me now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I saw this, you know, this need and you know, I took a, I took a financial class with my now wife, um, you know, like the Dave Ramsey class years ago. And that kind of sure. changed changed the course of, of our lives. You know, it got us living on a written budget. It got us, you know, attacking our debt. Like it was the enemy and it, you know, you know, kind of it changed the whole course. So, you know, all those things kind of aligned and I was, you know, interested in, you know, like how could I back to my community, come home every night, be creative with who I work with and do things my own way and have this capacity to create some sort of, you know, or passive income, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, like Pat Flynn and all, you know, Tim Ferriss, all that stuff. And so that's the stuff I've been listening to for years. And it's like, okay, well, there's this need. Um, what does it take to, you know, become an advisor? And, you know, it basically what it takes is finding the company and taking a bunch of tests. Surprising to me. And um, so that's how I kind of uh, got to where I am today. Huh. That's great. That's cool. So, uh, so you get started, uh, you get things going. W- was there anything that really stood out that surprised you the most as you, you know, started on this journey to, you know, kind of go out on your own? Thought I had a hard job <laughs> as a firefighter and, and, and it was hard, you know, especially like, you know, physically, um, and, you know, it can be scary, things like that it's hard running a business and you know i'm used to you know these endurance type of activities of you know 15 16 hour shifts on your feet with a 20 pound back backpack on lugging a chainsaw you know pounding ground falling trees for you know two weeks at a time come home for two days see my wife for like you know 12 waking hours and then go back out and that that was you know i thought of that as a hard job and it was a lot of fun but you know i thought of that as a hard job but man, starting a business is just, just challenging. And, you know, making that transition of counting the hours when you are, you know, an hourly or salary, you know, cause on fire, I'd be like, okay, you know, you track your hours and this is the, this is the hazard pay. This is the overtime pay. And when you're starting a, a business, I mean, you just, you don't really make that much money or any money uh, for a lot of people for a, a good amount of time. Sometimes, you know, I didn't make any significant money for you know six months. Yeah. So, sure. you know, that was just the, the reality of it. And, um, you know, I was definitely what I was, you know, I, I heard about that, but I was like, you know, what, I'll make it work. I'll figure it out. <laughs> and so having the, you know, transitioning that, that grit that I had of, you know, face down in the dirt, working hard compared to the grit of waking up at six 30, you know, getting my, getting my mindset ready for the day and, you know, putting myself in uncomfortable situations, calling people I'm scared of, and doing this activity, you know, for, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours, and then it doesn't result in any money necessarily, you know, that activity might build in a business. And so getting my, you know, transitioning into that of how I make money, um, you know, just, it, it, it's kind of surprising at first. So how did you, how did you yeah. go about that? Uh, or how did you, how did you deal with that? How did you prepare for it? Cause I, I, I certainly went through the same thing, you know, years and years ago, transitioning from having a salary to, you know, it, it went from getting a check every two weeks when I was working for Citibank. I, I became a consultant, almost doing the same thing, but really kind of wanted to take control of my life and do some different stuff. And, uh, and so I, I had to go three months without getting a check because it just took a long time for even though I was working. Right. So I, and I wasn't really prepared. For, I mean, I was sort of prepared for it. I, you know, it was it worked out. It was totally fine. But it, when I got to the end of that, I realized, oh, this was super empowering because now I am no longer a slave to that check that shows up every two weeks. So I, I'm curious, how did you go through that process? Did you prepare for it or anything like that? Yeah, so I did prepare for it. And, uh, you know, when I, when I think about the end of my fire career, so, you know, I, I, uh, my last fire was in Prescott, Arizona, which is where the granite mountain shots were from. And that was, uh, 
you know, very symbolic to me because I was the event that kind of led me to decide I wasn't going to fight fire anymore. Mm. And um, I came, I came home from that fire and I married my wife the next week. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And, That's awesome. And, you know, of course, I've been talking to my wife about how, you know, like, this is probably my last fire season. You know, probably. I kept using probably. And, um, you know, after after the, after we got married, you know, we had like a week before we went on our honeymoon. I was like, yep, that's my last one, honey. Um, I'm done. I'm not going back next year. And so basically, I married my wife and quit my job. <laughs> and, you know, we were used to that seasonal, uh, you know, uh, time off where I would, you know, do ski patrol or do these, uh, you know, random construction jobs or whatever during the, uh, the, the winter season. So we were used to that transition or that, you know, that time where I wasn't, you know, you know, bringing in the big bucks, if you will. Yep. And so we had that time period to go, you know, to get the transition going. Um, and I had all my, you know, my savings because I, you know, prepare for, you know, I make the majority of my money six months out of the year. So, we, you know, I had the savings ready. Um, you know, my wife had a predictable income. And so I guess I did the way that we prepared for it was, you know, it was almost like transition than what we've done in the past. Yeah. Um, but it, sound, it sounds like your life sort of prepared you for it. it you, you were used to that, that non, it, that inconsistency in cash flow, right? Because that, that's yeah. the key. Yeah. Cool. That's, 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 that's helpful. Right. And yeah. just, and just leaning on my wife, you know, leaning on her predictable income, you know, that I definitely, definitely couldn't do it without her. Yeah, we've talked about that on the show, and uh, I was in a similar position many years ago, you know, starting my first business and having that at, uh, uh, support, you know, it can be critical in your your long-term success, that's for sure. That's great. So, okay, uh, I, I want to talk about, you know, you, you mentioned to me a couple times when we were trading emails about referrals and how... Uh, Referrals are really a key part of your business. And um, as you're trying to generate leads and maybe, you know, warm leads instead of those cold calls that we all hate to do. Um, uh, let, let's talk about that. Have you come up with a, a successful, you know, system to develop, you know, these the referrals that you get to where I, I would imagine it's kind of a a fine line, right? Because you don't want to constantly be drilling your friends for people to call <laughs> for potential customers, but at the same time, you know. Yeah. So, you know, you know, as a financial advisor, you know, the, the firm that I work under, you know, they wanted me to come with a list of 300 people to call. And I gave them a list of 300 people to call, but only 90 of them were, you know, actual people I could call. So I was kind of walking the yeah. fine line of like, you no, know, they were loose connections. You know, they weren't, they weren't, uh, you know, a good network I had. Cause I, my, my existing network as a firefighter were firefighters, ski patrollers, you know, um, guys like that. Um, so, you know, it's terrifying calling your warm market. It, it's terrible. I was so happy to get through it and get to my referrals because I do have a good referral system in place. And, you know, it, it comes to, it comes down to like a couple of things, like the, the discipline to always remember to ask. And, you know, it's, it's like, it's just that discipline and consistency and uh, being prepared to ask. And so when I say being prepared to ask for a referral, um, you know, there's a couple of ways I look at that. So I will like make a feed list where I'll do like, appropriate social media stalking, you know, just LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, maybe I'll look on their business webpage, who do I work with? Um, and then also in my first initial meetings, you know, on my fact finding meeting, like first meeting with a prospect, you know, I'll talk about things like, Hey, what do you guys do for fun? You know, like, Oh, I, you know, I go hunting up on Kodiak Island every year with my you know buddies from high school, you know, and okay, take a note. They're buddies from high school, John and Jeff, whatever. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll prepare these feed lists that, um, that I can put in front of my clients or my prospects, but to get to that point where you're asking for a referral, you know, it's, you're going to have so much more success if you've added value before you get to that point. Um, you know, the way that my system is set up is everybody I work with is referral at this point in time. So it's like, you know, I'm really glad that Jim introduced us, you know, we've been working together for a couple of years now. 
go hunting up on Kodiak Island. You know, I'm really glad that worked out. So you're kind of planting these seeds along the way of, you know, this is, this is part of my overall process. And also in my, my business, I'm, I'm in this, you know, in a business where I'm talking about, you know, relationships for 20, 30 years. Uh, that's yeah, a long time. Sure. It's a big, I make promises to my clients for them for a long time and they understand my business. They're not who make or break, you know, one person is not going to make or break my career. They understand that for me to fulfill those promises that, you know, I need to keep growing my business. And Obviously, I'll sure. get referrals from everybody, but <laughs> right, right, and and I, I, I back to where you said, okay, you know, I've got to have added some value really before you ask for the referral. So, w- is that added value basically the services that that you know uh, your financial uh, planning and that kind of wealth management? That's what you're talking. That's the added value that they need to see before you would feel comfortable asking them for a referral. Not necessarily. I mean, obviously that is a big part of that is like the, usually the biggest value I add. Um, but, but it takes you know, time, I can, right? Yeah, that, it, that takes time. Yeah. That's, yeah. it's not like they're going to come to me and be like, Oh, I'm so glad I bought this life insurance policy. I feel like there's <laughs> yeah, a lot exactly. of value there. No, they, they start to see the value when they see, you know, their, their balance sheet grow. Yeah. Uh, so that, so what, and that what, takes time. Yeah. So what short term, like add value to where they feel, I, cause, cause you know, trying to put myself in that position, you know, I'm always, and I've dealt with, you know, lots of folks over the years and um, in your field and, and they just, I get it. They ask for referrals. Is there anybody else that you can mention, but you want to do it in such a way that you do feel like, Hey, if you introduce me to someone, I'm going to help them. I'm going to do something for them. Right. So oh, the, the value that I'll add in like in, you know, in an initial meeting, a first meeting, um, a lot of the time, especially, you know, I'm relatively new in my business and, you know, I'm 30, about turning 34 here in a few weeks. So like 33, lots of my clientele or most of my clientele around my age, maybe a little bit older. Um, and so these meetings are a lot of the time, it's the first meeting that they've had with somebody like me and they're, and they're usually in some type of transitional phase in their life. Cause that's just who I get referred to is usually the one, like when I'm asking for a referral is like married or got a new job so they're in this transitional phase and i'll help facilitate some conversations that maybe they haven't had with their spouse before and they can be really Im- impactful conversations and you know you, can, you know finances is the number one cause for divorce and you know we we talk i talk about like lots of vulnerable things in my meetings so just you know bringing some of those things to the surface and facilitating those conversations uh you know adds value Sure. Oh, so just so your knowledge, just uh, uh, right off the bat to to have those conversations with them. That's great. Yeah, it's almost so, like you have to be a therapist a, a little bit for uh, to, just to get people talking and and get things moving along. That's pretty interesting. It really is, and I've had you know, and you know, I hear that all the time with people in my office. And <clears throat> when I was talking to you know one of the recruiters at one of the other firms, they were saying that you know and i was like oh well i'm actually really good at that <laughs> i've had some really difficult conversations with people in, you know in really stressful situations and traumatic situations and also you know one of the, my favorite things about working as an emt was uh having genuine conversations with people that were in like hospice care and just having these really impactful conversations with people who are just really glad to be talking with somebody else other than a nurse or whatever, you know, that was one of the highlights of, of that previous career was having those conversations. So when I heard that, you know, you're kind of like a, you're kind of like a therapist, you can have some really heavy conversations. I was like, Oh, that's I like that. Okay. Bjorn back to and leading my next question. We were talking about uh, adding value and that kind of thing. And, and one of the things with, with your business, cause I always question, finance people that I deal with and and insurance folks is that trust seems to be, you know, such a critical factor. You know, you, you need to be the trusted guy that go to your, the company you're working under their umbrella needs to be very trusted. You know, what ways have you found to build trust, uh, you know, with, with new clients as well as your existing clients? Well, it, it starts with my, the referral process um, is really where, you know, you get a big head start sure. on that. Um, you know, that adds a ton of value uh, and makes my job a lot easier to build that rapport, uh, you know, in a really 
you know, quick and efficient way. Comes down to, you know, explaining your, uh, I'm very upfront with how I make my money in like the first five minutes. I'm also very clear about my fiduciary responsibilities. Um, and that's, you know, that's probably, that's really common. I'm sure across the board in my industry. Um, no, that's great. I think that's really good to, to point that out and kind of get that on the table. I think, I think I, that's, that's I like, idea. I like that idea of just telling people how you make money. Cause I, most people don't have a problem with other people making money, right? It's when they don't understand the process. They feel like, Oh, it's a scam. It's a, this, it's a, that. No, let me just, let me tell you how I make my money. And, and this yeah. is how we'll work together. And now, you know, that either there is no conflict of interest or if we, you know, if we step into that area, there's a potential conflict. And so we'll avoid that together. You know, that kind of thing. That's really great. I like that. Well, and I, and I think Bjorn, you know, your comment, well, I guess everybody does that. I don't, I don't know that they do. <laughs> so that's I don't why think I they do. <laughs> no. I recognize it. No. I think that's well, good. I just, yeah. I just put myself in, in, in their shoes. You know, like if I, if I got called up by some guy who worked with my buddy and invited me into his office, I'd be like, all right, man, what's, what's up here? <laughs> sure. So, so no, I'm very clear about that. And I also, I'm very upfront with, you know, like, you know, in these meetings, we talk about some, you know, heavy stuff sometimes like, Hey, what would your life look like if you couldn't work because you got hurt? Uh, you know, what happens if you can't pay for your kid's college? Um, things like that. So I get, I get very emotional. I mean, I get some emotional responses and I get very personal so, and I let the clients know that's, you know, some, some that we'll be going through and that I expect that if I'm going to be talking to them that, that, you know, the least I can do is just be a totally open book. So, you know, I always say, you know, if I'm ever talking to things, talking about things or services that just aren't relevant to you or important to you, just let me know if you have any questions about anything. You know, I asked you what your, what your life would look like if your wife died, you know, so you can ask me anything you want <laughs> and people, yeah. people respond to that. Huh? No, that's I great. Like it. Yeah, yeah. And do you have to, do you have to switch, uh, tactics? You know, you mentioned, okay, I'm on, let's say you're sitting down with somebody who's in their early thirties that, you know, maybe is, is, uh, just starting, you know, building this foundation of their life with the kids or whatever, that they need different kinds of insurance, uh, you know, wealth management that maybe now or in the future versus, you know, sitting down and talking to, let's say a 50 year old that, you know, has spent the last 20 years doing that. Uh, I imagine your the way you approach them needs to be a little different, right? Different, but it's it's not too different because i still want to talk to what's important to them and what they have in place. And usually that's the big difference is, you know, what, what are we starting with? And, but yeah, usually, usually people's goals are going to be pretty similar. So is, you know, if we just speak to what is important to those, uh, to that person in front of me, I mean, that's just the same as it is for a 25 year old. Sure. So is there an ideal, you know, client that, uh, that you go after? I mean, is it your certain demographic, um, that you stick to, or is it just depends on the referrals and, you know, uh, based on that? No, I, I make an effort to work with, uh, uh, freelancers and people that don't have, you know, a 401k provided to them. And those people are just comfortable communicating on, you know, online and go to meeting, whatever that is. You know, I have a, I have a client that's in like in the Philippines right now. Um, you know, I have clients all over the country. And so I, I like to get, I like to work with those types of people because they, you know, a lot, especially because there's a lot of people that are young and that are kind of, I, mean, I can relate to that are into, you know, into entrepreneurship, follow some of those same people that I follow and um, things like that. So we can usually build some rapport around those discussions and it just is kind of turning out that they're just kind of all over the place. That's right. Um, and then in general. And, no, no, no. I was going to say, I think that's brilliant uh, focusing on that market because those people do really need, you know, a guy like you. We, we talk about it all the time on the small business show, kind of building your quasi board of directors, your advisory board is what we always refer to it. And an insurance and financial uh, planner person definitely needs to be on a you know, freelancer, small business owner, entrepreneur, you need to have someone like that, that can help you, uh, you know, take a breath and plan and make sure things are, uh, you know, progressing in, in that area in the right direction. 
So, okay, let, let me ask you another question here. Uh, you know, one thing on the show, we're big fans of mistakes, and that may be because I've made so many of them, uh, but we've we've learned so much from them. And so we always ask, you know, our guests to come on, you know, and, and you're a relatively new business owner, but it doesn't take, you know, long to kind of, you know, trip ourselves up sometimes. It, you know, is there, has there any, has there been a, a best mistakes, if you will, that you've learned from in your, in your business so far? Oh gosh, there's a lot of, a lot of little mistakes that you make in your first, oh gosh, the first, I don't know, month was just full of or silly unprepared you know you've been drinking from a fire hose for six months and uh, then you get you know then it becomes real you know then you start taking action actually picking up the phone to call people um so i think one of the mistake a funny mistake was just you know the, these terrible phone calls that i made you know because it'd be like hey uh this is bjorn burnett uh you know i worked with you um on some fires or something uh now I'm an advisor. You, uh, what's your schedule look like next week? Like just <laughs> total train, like total train wrecks, right? My phone calls, and I didn't record the very first phone call, and I really wish I did because it was by far the worst one. Like my number one phone call from my office, um, and it was just like that. It was it was a it was a train wreck. But like the lesson I learned from it was, you know, I saw this guy's my he's my mechanic, so I see him a couple times a year, you know, and so I saw him. You know, probably like four or five months ago, you know, this has been a well over a year since I called on him. And um, I'm like, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that awkward phone call, man. He's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, you know, for me, I've been like, oh, my God, that was the worst phone call in my life. And here, here he is like, oh, no, he hung up the phone and got on with his life. You know, right, <laughs> right. Isn't, that the tr- isn't that the truth? <laughs> that, yeah. That's yeah. man. There's such a that's the that to me. That's the, like the big lesson so far here is like yeah, you, you is. it's so easy to let that stuff. I mean, you carried that with you for a year and that's a mm-hmm. short period of time, man. Trust. Trust me. That's a short <laughs> period of time because yeah. I've done that same kind of thing where it's like you, you get to the point where you realize, wait a minute, I'm the only one that saw it that way. It really wasn't a problem. Stop obsessing over it. Move on. You know, and you are, and and the thing is, you already had moved on. Right. You had learned from it. You had iterated. You got better at it. You knew that it wasn't your best moment. And that's fine. That's that's actually really good. <laughs> but then it's just like, you know, nobody else saw it that way way which is really interesting yeah <laughs> that's Uh-oh. great so there you go so bjorn uh tell tell us what's what's the next step for your business i mean uh you know what's your what's your plan what do you want to achieve in the next you know couple of years uh, uh you know moving your business forward um you know i'm kind of approaching it in it's kind of like two fronts that I'm working on and that's my, my local community. Uh, you know, I live in Bozeman, Montana and like one of the most beautiful places in the country and a really strong community, like lots of new tech here and some great businesses. So I'm looking to just solidify my local client base while building up this, you know, smaller client base I have of these, you know, freelancers and, you know, and solopreneurs that I've been working with that are just kind of all over the place. So we're, you know, if I'm, you know, talking about like a two or three year plan, you know, I'd like to see that, that local, you know, be solidified, but making more focusing more on that, you know, the freelancer and solopreneur uh, market that I'm really enjoying working with. That's That's great, man. Just grow that more. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So, okay. So, uh, once again, thanks for coming on the show. And I mean, there's some really great uh, uh, tidbits of, of advice in this one. And it, what's the best way uh, for our listeners, you know, the thousands of small business owners that, uh, that follow us each week, what's the best way for them to connect with you or learn more about your, your business? Uh, definitely just Bjorn Burnett Financial Planning, uh, Northwestern Mutual on Facebook, and then Bjorn.Burnett at NM, and that's B-J-O-R-N dot B-U-R-N-E-T-T at N-M dot com. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely put a link in there in the show notes for you as well. And uh, But it's great. We've really appreciated it. I've, I've you know, some great tips here, and, uh, you know, thanks for hanging out with us today. It was a good time. 
Yeah, thanks, Bjorn. Very, very good stuff. I, I, I always love kind of the things that the things that you think you're going to learn and then the things you actually learn. And that's what makes yes. doing this show always so different. much fun. It's always <laughs> different. Yup. All right, folks. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks, Bjorn, for coming on the show. Thanks to Go Designer Go for being our sponsor this week. Keep living that charmed life, folks. We'll see you next time.